everybody, and welcome to this presentation of the ECL Elite Division right here on Sports Gamer. I am Toogie, joined as always by my broadcast partner and Mr. Sin for the win. And Sin, here we are. It is the home stretch, week five, the final week of our regular season here, the winter season, of course, for the Elite Division this time out. And needless to say, there is still well, just about everything to be determined. That is how close these races happen to be all throughout the current standings. Yeah, I mean, seeding is definitely not what we expected and oh so important now as we've seen just so much competition in the on the playoff side of the bracket. And I mean, even on the other side, so many teams just neck and neck fighting and clawing to either stay out of the relegation positions, get into the playoffs or, you know, just have that better seeding so you don't find yourself taking on a uh, H-Reds or a Sawo in that first round. Absolutely. So we mentioned it. Let's get you all up to date. The standings as they happen to be but heading into, again, this match day, our first match day of week number five. And of course, right now, again, still a lot to be decided. A 30 game regular season, of course, left hand side of the bracket is where you want to be to find yourselves in a playoff position. And Sin, as we take a look. All eight of those playoff teams are currently locked in regardless. Of course, we often talk about uh, the points percentage based off of a drastic amount of you know games played. And there is still that bit of a, a bit of a gap, right? Sabo on 26 games, Goons on 20. So right now it's it's interesting because you look at Granite at seven and Roots in ninth. They're only one point behind. That is how close this still happens to be. There's still a ton to play for. And how about Northern Ascendancy only being three points out of that playoff picture as well? I mean, at one point in this season, we were thinking, oh, man, how are they going to stay out of, you know, that automatic relegation position? But right now, they're actually potentially with a chance to get into the playoffs, which is kind of crazy. But, yeah, Goons there, you know, should be a lock as long as they don't, you know, completely uh, explode there at the end with all those games in hand that they have and already securing that eighth spot, as you see. Absolutely. No, the Senate have been red hot as of late. Of course, as always, too, we want to talk about positions 13, 14, and 15. If you finish in one of those spots, you have to fight for your survival here against a team from our pro division that'll be looking to be moving their way up. And Sid, I mean, a decent little spot for YMCA Esports right now. Two points clear of Ouroboro Hockey, but man, two points. You're talking about a one win, one win swing, and that can very quickly change. And that 16th spot as well was your Gordon. Two games at hand, three points behind Conquer. It is still very much undecided who is going to be automatically relegated by finishing in last year. Yeah, again, there's, you know, with the way the ECL Elite here is set up, as, you have, you've, as you've said constantly, there is always something to play for. Every single game is important, no matter the stage of the season here. And that's exactly what we're seeing unfold here as we're down the final stretch, you know, only a few games remaining. And this is where it, uh, it really starts to get uh, extra important. Again, you look at one of those teams, 14th right now, HV71. We will see them in action a little bit later on as they take on Granite Gaming. Again, two teams that we just mentioned, both playing for points today for different reasons. But we start off today's action with arguably the most notable rivalry in all of a competitive EASHL esports, the EA NHL 22 esports scene. It is. Havu Gaming taking on for Lunda Sin. This was the matchup that when we started our coverage here with the ECL, this was it. This was, These were the two big teams, and they are still two of the biggest, no doubt about it. But obviously, last season, the real emergence of H-Reds. This season, it's Sawo Esports on pace to finish in the top two, as opposed to one of these two squads, which we have never seen during our time here. These two teams not finishing, at least one of them, in the top two. And you look at the stats on the season so far, and it's it's... You know, presumably going to be as competitive of the matchup between these two as we've ever seen. I mean, you expect it definitely. It's uh, pretty crazy. The goals for goals against absolutely identical, you know, a little bit of discrepancy here and there in the special teams, but you know, it's still, there's still got to be that, that rivalry there. And, and right now they're in that three and four seed as well. So they're really battling, you know, for some better seating. It's Probably a little bit out of the question for either of them to move up into that two spot with how Sabo has sort of begun to separate themselves from the pack. But, I mean, 
it's like you said, it's been wild to watch the journey of these two te- of these two teams and the division itself. Obviously, these two teams still very much elite, still very much, you know, part of that those true contending teams. But to see them now in the three and four slot with two other teams ahead of them has been uh, quite the experience. So, so with that, let's get you all a look at the lineups here today. And if you are familiar with these teams, well, it's the 12 that you expect to see uh, take the ice for these two squads. For Havu Gaming, it is Wiggleson, Dominoiti, and the captain on that right wing side, Flyer Kungen, Nasastelia, Villicun on defense, and Hanselino between the pipes. For Lunda HC, Playmaker, Potsloff, and Eki, Temu, and Loimu on defense. And Sin, unlike last week, where admittedly we did see a good performance in goal, uh, it will be Kape back between the pipes here for Forlunda. We'll talk about his stats on the season in just a few moments. But we want to start off, as always, with our center matchup here. And again, these two more than familiar with one another. It is Dominoiti and Potsloff. And Sin, you get a look again at the numbers. Two of the best that this division has to offer still at this point. Yeah, absolutely, and it's an incredibly uh, incredibly close matchup. Besides kind of that goal discrepancy, Dominoit has been able to find the back of the net quite a bit more, which has given him the advantage in points. But, I mean, just to speak of the sort of the history between these two, so many playoff, you know, uh, playoff matchups played championships, high stakes. I mean, when you go into a matchup against another center, sometimes you want to try to throw them off. I think both of them are going to kind of understand the tendencies. It might just come down to sort of a raw skill match in the face-off dot, and they've both been doing uh, pretty well this season, as you can see by their face-off percentages. The yeah, winger matchup is next, and again, a matchup we have seen on numerous occasions up to this point. It is uh, Wiggleson and Flyer Kungen. Well, in fairness, Wiggleson, the newest addition, of course, to this battle. But Wiggleson and Flyer Kungen, of course, for Havu, for Forlunda. Again, it is Playmaker and Eki. Sin, again, the point totals here are outrageous. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's what we expect to see from these four. And the problem is, I think, with every single individual in this matchup, we could sit there and point out how they can impact the game single-handedly. Yeah, and that's exactly what you need out of your out of wingers. And what I really like from Havu this season is with the addition of Wiegelson, they now have that player who can play a bit like Flyer Kungen in that he's aggressive on that forecheck but can still get back very, very good with that defensive skill stick. And so from Havu, you know, there's that threat on either side of the ice when you're trying to break that puck out. And on the flip side, we've seen Eki, you know, add in that you know, seemingly out of nowhere, this huge, huge point uh, part of his game, which is that net front presence. He has 33 goals on just 73 shots. You would think that's not sustainable, but here we are nearly done with the season. And he's like hovering. I don't even know the percentage, but it's like 40% around there shooting. That's absolutely insane. I mean, I think we've we've used the uh, descriptor of absolutely insane to describe yeah. quite a few of these guys on on numerous different occasions. The defensive battle, of course, again for Havu, Nasustelia, and Vilikun for uh, for Lunda. It is, of course, Temu and Loimu. And again, Sim, we've talked about. Oh, here's a battle where some you know the defensemen don't exactly put up the points that some others do. That is certainly not the case. And you know, you might look though at for Lunda, like the advantage may be the physical battle, but again, it's it's so so close and highly competitive between these two teams. Yeah, and it's you can kind of say that all the way up and down the line of just how even they are. And I feel like uh, we're traveling back in time a bit and you know, saying the same thing before a championship matchup. That's why these two teams are where they are. They have you know, six guys on the team who all contribute in certain ways, all bring something else to the table and all work together to kind of make this team what they are here. So we can kind of see anything. We can see, you know, a shutdown defensive battle, maybe some back and forth action. And, you know, we'll have to see uh, how the goaltenders react to those. And you mentioned him, so let's take a look at them now. Han Salino against Cape. And Sin, you look at these numbers, and while the goals against averages happen to be hovering around where we'd expect them, we have seen higher save percentages from these two in the past. It's almost surprising. We we haven't noted here. Cape is 10th in the league right now in terms of save percentage. Certainly not where we expect him to be. Yeah, not definitely not what we're used to seeing him either, especially with some of the other save percentages that we're seeing around this division right now. And, you know, again, could be a case of 
the chances that he sees, you know, are more high quality than some of the other ones that can, you know, can definitely be a factor. You know, how many shots is he facing per game and stuff that can definitely attribute or sorry, contribute to the lower save percentage. And on that flip side there, Han Salino with not as many games played, obviously you've been splitting the time in the net right there, but he does have that 80 save percentage, has a shout out to his name and hovering around that two uh, goals against average as well. So again, we are just a few moments away here from Puck Drop, the first game of two in the regular season matchup, of course, between Havu Gaming and Frolunda. The uh, epic, epic rivalry continues. Another chapter written today. And again, as we mentioned a little bit later on in this broadcast, Granite Gaming looked to further secure their playoff spot as HV71 still have an opportunity to get out of one of those relegation spots. So again, incredibly important points up for grabs all across the ECL Elite Division here today. And of course, then, you know, we've seen it in these other divisions as well. They're a little bit further ahead. The Pro Division playoffs, we've already seen uh, a game played there as well. And I think every other uh, lower league that we have, lower division that we have, of course, playoffs are already underway. So, again, so much to follow at all times here. Again, sportsgamer.gg for all the information that you need, not only, of course, for the elite division, but everything that we have going on here with the ECL. Zen, again, we, we look at what this matchup has, has represented in the past, and we saw it in the standings. I mean, right now, for Lunda 3, Havu 4, I'm very intrigued to see how this particular matchup goes because even if Rolunda pull off the double today, they would still be uh, two points behind Sawo. Sawo yeah. are two points clear, which is absolutely stunning. I mean, again, heading into the season, we we saw that Sawo lineup. I always, said, you know, all season long, have referred to the captain's poll that led to our preview show. Sawo was at fifth, and we kind of looked at that and we're like, Okay, I, I, you know, yeah, maybe they will make some waves this year. I don't think anybody expected this. I mean, we still have our defending champions in H-Reds, uh, who are two points up, or a point up, but two games at hand on Sabo. H-Reds, very likely going to be our number one seed. And again, there's only one time in our entire coverage here with the ECL that Forlunda wasn't the number one seed heading into the playoffs, as crazy as that is. But just the emergence of Sabo, it puts, I think, that much more uh, pressure on these two teams here because you look at the standings, I mean, if Havu has a rough day today, they're only a point up on Feriestad. There is a realistic possibility that Havu could be looking at not having home ice advantage in the playoffs. I don't know if that's ever happened to them in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, not since we've been covering it, I don't think. And and that's what's crazy. Havu, it, it's a lot on the table, especially for Havu and today. You mentioned, you know, Frilunda can't really get in front of Sawa with, through this matchup. It's for Havu, though, if they're somehow able to get the majority of the points, they could either tie Frilunda, maybe even if they get the double, jump them in the standings, which would be massive. Great, that sort of space. But yeah, you said, I mean, Havu in such a kind of precarious position when it comes to the seeding here that... You never know what will happen. So there's, again, a lot on the line for these two teams, which is exactly what we like to see when they do play each other. And, I mean, I can't wait for this puck to drop. I have a feeling it's going to feel like a playoff matchup. And, you know, both these teams are obviously going to give it their all. And it's going to feel like old times. Here's hoping. So, again, just a, a few moments away from that. Again, tomorrow there will be that Pro Division playoff coverage right here on the channel. I do believe, of course, at the same time, 1945 uh, CET. And, of course, Sin and I should be back here this Wednesday and Thursday to wrap up our Week 5 coverage. And as a result, the regular season coverage here in the division. And it's been absolutely crazy to think that here we are. This is the final week of the regular season already. We know, that, of course, that it was cut down by, uh, by a week in kind of, you know, uh, a bit more fast and furious of a format. Uh, but still, you know, we hit this point. It's like, oh, man, playoffs start very, very soon. Still, for the most part, again, we don't really know who's going to be there and who isn't. Uh, but it has been another great uh, season to be able to see how this has played out. Like I said, this matchup here, too, very, very important for these two squads. As, again, we are just about ready to go. But you got to look there, of course, at the prize pool as well. Since that these guys are playing for our new two-season format leading to the grand final a lot of money to be played for, and again, makes it oh so important. You, know, you talk about finishing fourth and just what that can mean as well. You know, that home ice advantage in the playoffs can certainly come into effect. 
Yeah, and you know, home ice advantage is great. We have seen obviously some up that up uh, upset, excuse me, but obviously, you know, you want to get the best chance uh, possible there, especially if uh, you know when it comes to necessarily some of those uh, server edges, as slight as they may be. When you're, you know, when these guys like they are used to playing those lower pings constantly, you know, the ten twenty differential can be uh, quite important here. But what also is important is this matchup right here, as we've already sort of alluded to, and. We'll see what happens, man. I mean, self admittedly, I think a couple of these teams, uh, well, both of these teams have sort of had some adjustments to make uh, going into this season. Obviously, Havu Gaming adding some new players, trying to recover from what's sort of been happening to them over the past couple season. And uh, when it comes to Ferlunda, I mean, self admittedly, we saw from Eki saying on Twitter, you know, this has been a bit harder of a game for us to adjust to. So, I mean, now's the time to really see have they adjusted properly and really got their uh, sort of feet under them heading into the playoffs because they're really going to need it with the way H-Reds and Sabo have been playing. It was one of the most recent things I think I saw from Eki on Twitter. It was yesterday uh, in their games against not only Dad but ZSC Esports, uh, mentioning, don't remember worst ECL games from us and individually ever. So... You can make that point, you know, uh, I'd imagine they're very much focused for this particular matchup. You know, if yeah. you kind of struggled yesterday, that, you know, that desire to improve and get back to where they need to be heading into the playoffs, uh, no better opponents. And it could make for a rough afternoon for Havu. But of course, we have seen Havu get the better of this for Lunda team before in a championship level as well as, of course, sportsgamer.gg. The big rebrand, of course, because again, it's not just it's not just an NHL gamer situation. And of course, we had seen the coverage on the FIFA side of things in the past little bit as well. We are underway. Game one of two between Havu Gaming and for Lunda. It is Havu in on the attack here in the early stages. Again, very important points up for grabs for both sides. Is that shot just around the back net? Huge hit for Loimu. It's a domino anti flying. Again, we can expect to see that physicality. From both of these teams, both very aggressive around the back of the net. Eki. His playmaker again once more in the corner. That rocket pass in front. Nasustelia just able to break that one up. Good scrum in the corner. It's Havu who come up with it. Sin, of course, I mean, that, that rocket pass in front. We've seen all season long how dangerous, of course, uh, the uh, Forlunda trio happened to be, especially Eki in a net front situation. Havu's going to have to be on their game. Kape is able to make that save. Pass in front there. Shot on and another save. Dominointi denied this time. Abu forced to reset, but maintaining possession here in the early stages. That was a couple nice chances. That pass that got over to Weagleson. Unfortunately, he couldn't pull the trigger quick enough, but they're right back in on the attack. The dump and chase they've been using to great effect this season. There's Weagleson down low. That pass in front broken up. Weagleson again, golden helmet wearer. As his team's leading scorer, one timer to flex away. And this from London back in control, forced to drop it back. Let's see what they can do now, trying to get established. Tamu, nearly triple teamed here, big step up, and just not able to hold the line. Tough situation there. Yeah, a little frustration coming up from Potts up there, slapping it down the ice. He had it. He tried to kind of keep it over the line with that stick play there. Just unfortunately had come out briefly. That will create the uh, neutral zone situation. You can definitely feel that they wanted to get that puck in, establish some momentum, because right now it's been all Havu, and they're right back in. Dominoite goes to Villicoon at the point. Circle back, drops down low. That pass in front nearly found its intended target. Good job on the collapse by Forlunda. Take away that option. Good patience there by Eki. Getting hounded for the puck, though. Something for Linda have to be very careful of, Sim. We've seen it all season long. Relentless forechecking from the Havu front three, typically led by Captain Flyer Kungan. Sustelia is able to break that one up. Weagleson now. He takes the hit. Big hit there along the boards. No penalty called. An injury for Flyer Kungan. He's still trying to get back to his feet. So numbers advantage here for Fralunda. Not able to maintain puck possession. Regelson there getting bumped all the way down by Potsloff. Domino anti. Trying that quick give and go with his injured captain. Simply nowhere to go on this occasion. Domino anti for Regelson. Quick drop back. Domino anti again. Taken away in the slot. Good defense by Forlunda. Not able to maintain possession. 
That pass off the mark. We have seen that a couple of times in our Havu uh, games that we've been able to cover this season since. Some errant passes while they're trying to move it around, open up those lanes to get through the trap as Flyer Coongan has it here, tries to find Dominoiti. An injury no longer affecting him. That shot saved by Cape. Good deflection bit in front. We have three and a half minutes to go here in the first period. A rapid pace to this one. Again, we have seen this matchup before as a championship final on numerous occasions. Two of the top teams in the world. That shot just wide. What a look for Billy Coon. And a bouncing puck will be offside. Send that close to the opening goal for Havu. Yeah, and I don't know if Havu's looked better at any point in the season so far when we've been covering them than they have so far. They're just absolutely taking it to Frelunda right now. Their zone entries are clean. Uh, they're stopping Frelunda from even getting over the blue line, and when Havu has it set up, they're able to get their chances down low. They're using the points for shots. They're using those points for one-timers. They're... It's, it's picture-perfect play right now for Havu. They haven't found that goal quite yet, and they're going to want to do that soon because you know there's going to be some pushback for Ferlunda, and if all this uh, kind of offensive pressure and momentum goes by the wayside for Havu, that could present a major, major missed opportunity in a matchup that's bound to be close like this one. Ecky for Playmaker. Disrupted final seven seconds here in the period. Game is passed down low. That one-timer broken up. Hanselina will cover. Doesn't risk it. Cape. Gonna be joining the fray here, 1.7 to go, and Sin, you know, I've called this out numerous times. I love to see this level of aggression. We'll see what happens on this faceoff. They do have time. Faceoff one, shot, rebound, almost! Found its way to the back of the net. Close, close call there, Sin. Maybe both goaltenders fortunate to have not given up the, open go the opening goal quite yet. That was a great chance at the end. That absolutely was just, I think that would have been Plea maker there, or yeah, plea maker kind of on the doorstep, I think it was, trying to get that backhand shovel shot off, and he just couldn't find the back of the net. But what a set play coming out from Fralunda at the end there, making the most of the few opportunities that Havu gave them in that period. And again, that was that was very, very close at the end there. But speaking of close, that one timer from Villicoon that just kind of whistled wide of the net also close to so no opening goal from these two teams yet but no shortage of action here Havu as you can see by the numbers and from the eye test clearly getting the better of the play right now so for Linda gonna have to find some kind of response here in the second period because it simply wasn't working their break-in was getting stifled by those layers of the fence as we talk about that Havu has had and if really really improved upon as this season has gone along so gonna have to see a couple other things coming out from Ferlunda's bag of tricks here in this second period indeed second period underway Havu right back in on the attack where they left off penalty called power play coming up for Havu it will be off of a charging call against Loyman yeah and that's uh the aggression, as we sort of mentioned, from those defensemen, a lot more hits than the uh, Havu pairing. That time it comes back to bite him right there as Loimu just trying to move a guy off of the puck. Uh, takes a few too many steps and will be sitting in the box. Can we see the Havu power play go to work. Fifth ranked power play against the sixth ranked PK on the season so far. It is Wiggleson. That pass broken up and cleared out by Pleamaker. Intrigued to see the looks here that Havu could end up getting, but it can be tough to gain the line against Verlunda even in a short-handed situation. You see how much they had to fight for it. Steve D now Billy Kuhn for Flyer Kungan. That pass in front again for Dominoiti broken up. Great job by Nasu Stelia to keep that puck alive. Kuhn for Dominoiti. Nasu Stelia shot off the leg of a defender in front. Flyer Kungan dishes it around. Gets it back. Shot again. Just wide. Great shot. Sin, now we've seen both defensemen with A grade opportunities. They just couldn't sneak it on the inside of the post. Yeah, and that was just picture perfect. Picture perfect movement and uh, body puck, everything. Just the set plays that they're setting up. The timing was just brilliant coming out from Harvard. They just simply couldn't find the back of the net. Here's Playmaker now. Trying to take on both defenders. Not able to do so. Puck kept alive. Play move for Eki. Trying to find playmaker down low. Again, now Sustelia. Strip him of the puck. Bring it down the other way. Dumped to that far side corner. Bouncing puck and 
Fortunately, Norfly or Kungin uh, or Vilikun could uh, manage to pick that one up, but it does go all the way down for Icing, so we will see an attacking zone draw for Havu. Yeah, it was a pretty nice chop to get out of the zone. I'm a bit surprised that it went down from ice for Icing as it did completely go through Vilikun right there, but it'll be an offensive face-off for Havu. They get the better of it here, do for Lunda. Here's Playmaker, has Pots off for Tamu, excuse me, joining the play, hits the side of the net on the backhands. Didn't expect the defender to jump up into the play that quick. Defense to offense on that faceoff. And again, just trading chance for chance. No one able to find the back of the net quite yet. What a pickup by Nasustelia. Flyer Kungin's backhand goes wide. As Moimu again being hounded by Wiggleson gets out of trouble though. And now it's Potsla. Playmaker has it knocked loose. Great job there by Billy Kuhn. Just disrupt that for a brief moment, but it does result in the offside. Yeah, I feel like that's what Vilikun and Nasustelia as a pairing do so, so well. Those little kind of surreptitious, well-timed pokes at the blue line. Not you know, not always creating that turnover, but as you said, sometimes just disrupting the play right there, as I thought. May have had a situation going on with Havu as uh, Nasustelia there just kind of skated uh, or glided into the wall. What a poke there by Flyer Kungan to keep that alive in the Ozone. Indeed, causing trouble for Loimo Wigelson's pass disrupted. And London now going down the other way. It again will be an offside. They elect not to touch it. Give up the free possession. Keep that clock ticking. Good movement here. Dominoiti takes the hit. Can't make the play. Eki for Pleamaker. Down that right-hand side of your screen. Pleamaker. Now Eki banks off the back of the goal again. Now Sustelli is there to disrupt anything that they've tried to get going on below the goal line. Dominoiti. Back for Nasus Stelia. Waiting it out. Shot on. Good save by Cape. Saw the block attempt in front there before that shot. The scramble for the puck, and that one just wide on the backhand for Wiegelson. Space here in the middle. Playmaker tries to throw it on. Not sure what happened there, Sin. I thought for sure we'd see that sauce pass into the slot. We just couldn't get that chance away. Playmaker sauces it on goal. Huge hit, but it's Havu in the zone. Another one just wide of the post. We need some, uh, we need Sebastian Ajos in to step in here and teach these guys a little bit of accuracy. Some tough breaks for both teams. In terms of finding that opening goal, Villikun loses it. Eki to Playmaker. One-timer save by Hanselino. Great job there by Havu's netminder. How we haven't found the first goal in this game so far is beyond me. I've counted about two chances for either side that could have easily gone in with a few more that were uh, pretty close as well. This is just teetering on the brink of a uh, potential disaster or uh, or uh, or otherwise for one team or another. There's Wigglesin in front, scores! Tremendous patience on display, finds Dominoiti in front. Sin, what a goal as they waited out the defender who dove down in front of the net. Just a beautiful bit of uh, patience right there and the pass. And even after the pass, it was a slight bit of patience from Dom Anointy to sort of, you know, move towards an angle and be able to beat Kape there on the forehand. And much, I think it would have been Loimu sliding down there trying to get in the way. Did a good job of it, but again, it's just that patience of Havu and the wherewithal to sort of hold that puck, pass it at the right moment, and then wait and shoot it at the right moment, as you can see the uh, defender getting up and wasn't obstructing at least the uh, lower part of the ice anymore. Just a big, a big goal here at the end of the first. Second. Here's the chance. Great job by the defense to break that up. It's the one to trying to get that tying goal. Seven seconds to go here in the second period. Now Sustelia not able to out-duel Loimu perhaps one more chance for Eki, one timer, and they run out of time. It was a block to save anyway by Hans Lino. Sim will get one more look at it. Dominointi's 18th of the season. Finally, sees us with our opening goal of this game, a 1-0 lead for Havu heading into the third. I mean, just picture perfect nearly from, from Havu uh, in almost every facet of the game. They haven't had too many lapses there. As that was indeed actually Tamu. Um, on that side of the ice, uh, diving on the, uh, just trying to break up that passion initially. And then by the time he was trying to, uh, you know, get back up and adjust, Dominointi had the puck, was delaying and moved it to that uh, forehand to, to shoot it home. But not too often we see Ferlunda being uh, out time unattacked. 
especially you know in the case of Ahavu at times, who have been seen as more of a defensive team. This is kind of they kind of insane in this matchup. Six minutes time and attack uh, for Havu, only two for uh, for Lunda, and their their pass percentage isn't there. They're losing the face off battle. They do have the more hits, sure. They don't have as many registered shots. It's right now for the most part been all Havu. The chances that for Lunda have been getting have been you know, fewer and far between, and Havu just doing a great job of being able to dictate that pace. And anytime Havu has a lead, no matter how small, their defense gets that much more scary because they're just able to stifle most of the stuff that you want to do. And if Ferlinda can't get the quantity of chances that they want, I'm not too sure if they're gonna be able to find the quality either. Big stretch pass, great job by Flyer Kungen to stay onside. And right now, it's not just Havu who have uh, smiles on their faces. If the score holds, it's tremendous for Sawa. Flying poke check takes away the chance from Potsla. Still alive and a kick save by Hanselinho as well. He's had to make some big saves in general in this game so far. Continuing to do well. As it's Playmaker stuck on the backhand. Goes to the point. Blocked down by Flyer Kungan. Potsloff winning it back. That one broken up as well. Now Wiggleson tries to get going the other way. Good step up hit there by Loimu. It's Tamu takes the hit from Flyer Kungan. And an offside pass there. Nearly five minutes gone in this first period. A great save from Hans Salino to keep Falunda off the board. Tremendous save. And I, I on that second opportunity, I wasn't too sure if it uh, hit hit uh, hit the goaltender or Vili Kun there, who's sort of at the side of the net trying to uh, keep the puck out. Just kind of a mad scramble there but it ends up working out. But that was kind of some of the best uh, zone time that Ferlunda have been able to muster in this one. You can see them right now. And part of it was that step up from Loima that you mentioned in the neutral zone. They, they were just desperate to keep that momentum going. It's Playmaker now has a little bit of space. Pass across, scores! It can happen that quickly, Sin. Playmaker over to Eki. We're tied at one. Just as it could sort of happen at the other end when Havu came down and scored a quick one. Now it's for Linda's turn. Plea maker to Eki. I feel like we've said that so, so many times throughout the course of our time here. We're covering the ECL Elite. And for one more time, Eki with a huge, huge goal against Havu here to tie this game up in the third. 1344 remaining. Buckle your seatbelts, folks. We are far, far from done in this one. 34th goal of the season, team leading scorer and second in the elite division, trailing only Villapoika of H Reds. Dangerous moments here for the Havu defense. And they're finally able to get it out of trouble. Indeed, we are tied at one apiece. First game of two here tonight between these two teams. Again, ECL elite division action, our final week of the regular season. Brought to you, of course, always by our friends at Kovan Lakutsi, Wilhelm and ST Hockey as we are nearly halfway through this third period. Entirely different outlook to this one now. We have seen incredibly close games between these two clubs before. This is nothing new. Not to say it's not exciting though, just because it's nothing new. Again, we said a new chapter would be written between these two teams tonight. And already this game living up to the hype. Here is Potsloff along the half wall. Gets to Eki cutting in. Backhand blocker stop by Han Salino in trouble here for Villicun. Can't get it out. That shot saved as well. Han Salino being called upon. On numerous occasions here already in this third period. This has been the most consistent run of offensive control that we've seen from Falunda so far in this game, Sam. Yeah, and what a time to get it as the clock sort of winding down here. It was pretty much all Havu throughout the first, uh, I guess you could argue, first two periods here. And finally, some some good pushback for Ferlunda in the clutch here. It's presenting him an interesting opportunity. The four check forces a turnover. Playmaker not able to get that pass in front, but he does get it back. On the back of the net, in front, broken up. Still has it now. Looking at his options, great. Oh, check, though, by Weagleson. We'll give Havu a moment to breathe. That was an excellent job by Wiegelson to force the pressure and then also get that stick in the lane. This time, again, Playmaker, though, this time will chase it down. Stops the clock at 3.46. Remaining in regulation, of course, as always, if we go to overtime, sudden death rules here in the regular season. We will play until we have a winner. See, face-off is won by Dominoiti. Havu in control. Scored the opening goal of this game. It was Dominoiti to get that goal as well in the second period. 
This hit there can't keep the possession alive. It is Falunda back in. Good hit there by Flyer Coogan. Loose puck keeps it alive at the very least. And Temu able to take away that opportunity. Eki can't hold on to it. Puck dumped in to Hanselino's blocker side. Falunda will back up a little bit. Daring Habu to just try and find and fight their way through. Might see a dump and chase attempt, and there it is to that left-hand side. Great puck chop to take it away. And playmaker playing with fire. Wigglesid nearly able to walk away with that one. 40 seconds to go and an offside call once more. I don't know when's the last time, Sin, we saw this many offsides against Verlunda. It's definitely uh, sort of been a while. Uh, but just to touch on once again the the kind of the sneaky plays that Weagleson and Flyer Kungen are able to make there when they're applying pressure um, at the opposing blue line to try to, you know, force a turnover or something like that. It's it's something that we've always seen from Flyer Kungen. And now when, as we sort of mentioned in the pregame, seeing Weagleson being able to bring that as well, it's a lot more threat coming out from Hava. You can't just keep your eyes and be like, okay, Flyer Kungen's dropped back. We are safe to move forward because, you know, again, Weagleson's there presenting the same amount of threat here. And at the same time, Havu's still able to get everyone back and defend well. Amo able to get the one to Eki. Still fighting for it. Playmaker nearly pulled it through. Would have been in all alone. Well, 17 seconds now. Puck still disrupted. Belinda have figured out their defensive strategy here in the third. Dominoiti has it. Final 10 seconds. Will we see overtime? Flyer Kungen down low for Dominoiti around the back. Stuck on the backhand. Flyer Kungen takes the hit. Potslav has it and will kill the clock. We are going to overtime. Again, our first game of the day. The greatest rivalry the Elite Division has ever seen. Of course, why wouldn't it go to overtime? As we get a look at one of these saves that Hanselino made just to get that extra point, or at least that first point of what could be two for Havu. Yeah, this, this point's absolutely massive, mostly for Falunda, because now there's no possible chance that Havu can leapfrog them in the standings. They could tie them now, but... As uh, Ferlinda has that gained at that point, there's only three more left to grab up, so that would only tie these two. And, I mean, wow, just what a game. Especially, again, this one could easily be about three to three right now. We saw all those chances in the beginning. A couple coming up from Havu, you know, those one-timers from Nasustelli and Villicun. On the flip side, it was Ferlinda, you know, getting some of those in tight chances. Hanselinia would uh, turn one aside. It was just back and forth, back and forth action. Uh, for really all of that third period after Havu had the advantage in the first two periods. So they kind of feel like it got away from them a little bit, not being able to capitalize earlier on. But again, they'll take the point here. There's still a chance to get another one. We'll see what kind of Havu team comes out of the gates here in overtime and if Ferlunda is uh, ready for them as they were in the third. Indeed, overtime underway. In the regular season matchup between these two, the first of two, the home-and-home -home set, Kapek. Get that one over to Tamu. Flyer Kung get a full commit there, so he's trailing. See what he can do on the back pressure. Here's Eki shot on. Save. Hanselino trouble. It gets poked away. Eki's pass broken up. That one ended up hitting the pads, though. Bouncing puck. Dangerous moment for goaltenders. Dominoiti, good intercept. Finds Flyer Kung. The captain for Havu has it knocked loose by Loimu. Dominoiti, they're fighting for it. Still has it. Goes over to Villicum. Flyer Kungen throwing one on. Rebound denied. Wiegelson. Point blank chance. Kape says no. Huge save coming out from Kape there in the clutch. Wiegelson just found that kind of little bit of cushion, little bit of space there in the, in, in the slot and just couldn't pound that one home because Kape was right there. Tough turnover there. Havu able to recover. There's Wiegelson. He'll dump it in. Again, another puck chop. Excellent use of the chop by the front London defense. It's often, I think, seen in the past why we wouldn't see the dump and chase. Is hey, if defenders know, like, yeah, yeah the puck chop. It's, it's very effective to counteract it. You're not going to make much room as Dominoiti's shot blocked down in front. Here's Pleamaker now. A little bit of space for him. Shot on. Saved by Han Salino. And saying that might be... Playmaker's biggest weapon is just his ability to catch goaltenders off guard by throwing on pucks when they'd least expect it. 
definitely. And his great puck control, especially when he's kind of else getting as we saw there on that zone entry, just creating the space. And with that shot on that again, I mean, you could kick out for a rebound, but you saw where it was kind of going to. That short side, just in case Hanselino came off his post a bit. Really couldn't did a good job to get that into the attacking zone. Couldn't maintain possession. Here's space. Two on one developing. Plea maker over Eki. Couldn't find it. It's out of his range of view there as a shot from the point. Locked down again. Plea maker in front. Eki nearly jammed that one home. This was a plea maker to Eki pass with Eki posted up in front that scored the goal and scored the majority of the goals for Finlanda this season. Billy Coon. Back down for Flyer Coogan. That shot again. Weagleson, a good chance. D to D. And again, one timer. Loose puck in front. Cafe able to find it. And he makes the cover. I mean, kind of survival mode at times here for Ferlund. Once Habu starts to get that cycle going, they're looking absolutely deadly. And Ferlund just kind of having to be a bit more passive than I'm sure they'd like to be, just to sort of sh try to shut things down. But their counterattacks have been good as well. They're able to catch Havu slightly off guard there, get him, you know, over poking uh, at the line and creating some uh, odd mans I've seen from uh, Eki and Pleamaker a couple times. Hots off now for Verlunda. Six minutes to play here in the overtime. Again, as mentioned, sudden death rules will be here for as long as is necessary as Pleamaker sends that one down low. Eki will win it dishes back to the point shot blocked gets it back pass in front again Hanselino is <laughs> the man with the chance just says ah, I'm going to the bench I'm gonna go take a seat after that one need to, need to calm down a little bit how did I not score there don't necessarily blame him that was an in tight opportunity to pass from uh, Eki to plea maker and Hanselino just stoned him cold here's Eki again plea maker Back around, chance, loose puck, still there, Hanselino finds it. Dangerous moments for the Havu goalkeeper, but able to keep the puck out for now. And guess who was right on the doorstep there, looking to get a stick on that. That was Eki, where he's been so, so dangerous all season long. Off the draw. It is for Lunda throwing one on, scores! Playmaker is the hero for Lunda, come back to take this one two to one in overtime. Big, big result for them. Absolutely massive and this is what we talked about at the beginning. If Havu weren't able to capitalize on their chances in the beginning when they were out playing for Lunda, it couldn't come back to bite them and they dropped the extra point here in overtime off just, again, throwing the puck at the net. The nice deflection coming out from Playmaker and it finds its way in. Looks like it went off at the defenseman by the player's reaction there. Huge, huge game for Falunda. I was worried for them definitely throughout the first period. They looked like they were form, you know, just solidly getting outplayed, but they're able to stick with it. They're able to survive those pushes. They fought back. They got that goal, and in overtime here, they got back to a strategy that's been working for them all season long. Throwing the puck on net, looking for the deflections. It works in this one. A two-to-one victory against their rivals in Havu. A tough break on that goal as well, Sin, as the puck was up for grabs. It looked like Havu was going to maintain possession. Hopefully we get another look at that goal, but it looked like Havu might maintain possession and send it down the other way. Not so much for Lund to get the goal. Playmaker with his 21st of the season, his 7th game-winning goal on Lund's 18th win of the year. Not too shabby as again the stats are close both goaltenders making some big saves we'll get a, another look here at the opening goal of this game for Dominoiti and again it was just great patience Beautiful. and to take advantage of the defender who kind of went all out yeah it, it was just from both of them from Weagleson and then from Dominoiti is just perfect amount of patience out of both of them here as we're going to get a look at the game tying goal as it was passed over and just kind of uh you know a bit 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 a bit fortuitous for it to go off of the pad and then in right there. And this is the game winner again, just throwing the puck on net. It wasn't a particularly hard shot. In fact, it looked like it began to lose altitude there before the deflection. And my goodness, that's about as unlucky as you can get for Havu off of uh, Han Salino after the deflection, then off of the fender skate off the post and in there. But what I do like for Linda was getting out shot for most of the game. And in that third period in overtime, you can kind of see their mentality shift from like, okay, well, if we're not going to get, you know, the qu the quality of chances or necessarily quantity that we want, 
Let's just start throwing the puck on net. And that's what they did. And they actually led in registered shots at the end of the game after trailing for, as we mentioned, pretty much the entire game there. So good on Forlunda from kind of taking what's given to them. And that was a big, big contributing factor in being able to beat Hava. Not just that, it was Kape making some big saves some defensive shutdowns, some good puck chops off those dumps, which we've seen Havu love to utilize this season, those cross-corner dumps. And if those chops are going to come out, it kind of has to be your player needs to get there first. But, you know, obviously still a viable strategy. It's just in this one, they didn't capitalize on those early opportunities, a couple, you know, missing the nets, and that's how it goes. That extra point goes to Ferlunda. So the first game of the day, again, for Linda, the 2-1 to one overtime win. The second game of two between these two teams coming up in just a few moments. We'll set the stage for you after a quick word from our sponsors. Don't go anywhere. Minkä päällä lakukastike maistuu parhaalta? Ei voi tietää, ellei kokeile. Kouvolan lakritsi. All right, so we are back, everybody. And again, thank you for sticking with us here. The beginning of week five, our final week. Of the regular season, of course, playoffs beginning very, very soon. And Sin, of course, we talked about it for both of these two teams, finding themselves in third and fourth, respectively, for Linda ahead and now more so, of course, with gaining that extra point. Uh, neither of these two teams are really expecting to be uh, where they typically are by the end of the regular season in terms of the standings, but still very much uh, in a good spot heading in, you know, towards the playoffs. And again, potentially, you know, still having home ice advantage and being able to make a run. At the very least here, I want to talk about for Lunda first and, and what they were able to do well, because you kind of talked about it throughout the course of the game. Slow start. They were able to figure things out. For Cape especially, though, you know, somebody that we mentioned in the pregame, walking into this matchup with a, a sub-80 save percentage, and you know, something that we certainly don't expect to see from him. He was fantastic in that game. That was the yeah. the cape you would expect to see show up. I mean, only surrendering a goal on a chance where, let's be honest, there was really nothing he could do to stop that. No, that was just perfectly played again by Wiegelson and Dominoiti. It was you're as a goaltender, that's that's hard enough to to try to save if, you know, the initial one timer came over. But it was kind of the patience that came out from Wiegelson to stop kind of, you know, force that defender who was sliding to get around him, made the pass. And then Dominointi as well didn't just immediately shoot it, delayed a bit. It's just yeah. And from in tight like that, you know, near impossible for Copy to make the stop. I want to mention two for for Lunda. You, you, know, you talk about one of Havu's main weapons this season, the dump and chase and the reemergence that we've seen in terms of teams utilizing the dump and chase here in the Euro scene compared to the NA scene, you know, North American side, it's always been a little bit more prevalent. The, uh, you, know, you talk about adapting, Teemu and Loimu. That dump and chase was working in the first period, even in oh, the yeah. second. By the time that third period came around, those two were chopping away every attempt. And that's, you know, really good. They were hanging a bit further back from the line instead of maybe looking for the collisions as they were at times. They switched that pressure to the neutral zone to try to keep things alive, keep the puck in their favor. And instead, when Hava was going to gain the red line and look to attack, they would drop back a bit more to be able to chop away those dumps. Because again, you can't rely on getting that clean possession because the way the puck bounces, someone's going to be bearing down on your neck, starting to bump you, starting to just kind of get in your bubble. And so when you chop it away from that pressure and can count on your defenseman behind the net you have a much better chance at a uh, controlled breakout well again coming up a little bit later on hv71 taking on granite hv71 of course looking to battle out of those relegation spots granite looking to secure a playoff position after missing out last year and undergoing a lot of roster changes this year again friendly reminder as well in chat the prediction is up for this second matchup between havu and and for Lunda, uh, very much intrigued to see how this one goes in. And again, you know, we talk about where these two teams are in the playoffs. Still a lot to play for here in this matchup as well. Didn't really get to talk about it, but for Havu, it's just a matter, I think, right, of trying to get back to what they were doing through the first and second period of game number one. Yeah, they that was the best they looked. And again, it's unfortunate for them that they didn't get a few more goals off of it. And 
The problem with that is, is they've showed that to, to Ferlinda. Ferlinda's had the chance to maybe adjust. Can they even get back to that at the beginning of this game or at any point in this game if Ferlinda's going to be ready for it and be able to kind of, you know, have a game plan to counteract it and start to push the play back in their favor as we saw at the end of the third and in that overtime especially. Here we go. Action underway. Havu in their home black and green. And right back in on the attack as they started things off in that first game. Again, a 2-1 overtime victory. It was a 1-0 Havu lead, but they simply could not find that extra goal. Very difficult to beat Kape once, let alone twice in a game as Playmaker gets that one in front. Good look. Not sure if it ended up in a shot on goal. There was a lot of traffic in front there. Just a great hustle coming up from him to beat out that icing call as well. Boimu sends this one around. Eki for Pleamaker. No room. A bouncing puck ends up with Havu. Flyer Kungan takes the hit. A lot more aggressive, of course. Have the front of defenders been as you get a great look at it there. Dominoiti. It's being hounded here. Forced right back out to the neutral zone. Very, very tough for a team to deal with that level of pressure. Puck down low. Here's Wiegelson. Pass in front. Broken up by the traffic in front of goal there. Again, we talked about it. Eki mentioning. Feeling like they hadn't played uh, worse games prior to yesterday. They didn't lose all four games, though. It's worth noting. But still feeling like they're not where they want to be. Dominoiti tried to get it back to Wiegelson. Secondary chance off of the rebound given up by Kape. One again will be offside. Good stick work by Havu to break that puck up. Yeah, Dominici not quite ready to receive that puck where he did, or else had he been ready for it, he could have fired that shot off immediately. But good awareness from him realizing that Kape would have adjusted. He tried to instead send a pass across to Wiegelson, who would have had a bit better of a scoring opportunity there. So Havu, you know, still kind of sticking to that game plan. Still, you know, very, very patient with the puck despite dropping that first game. Havu were able to do here on this possession. We saw it very much on display in that first game. One possession, one rush chance. Game result in a goal. There is the dump and chase. Flyer Kungan is able to come up with that one. Tried to go to Dominoiti. Hit the skates. Dominoiti gets it back. Billy Kuhn nearly turned it over. Nasistelia. Strong safety net there. Keep that puck out of a, a dangerous situation. But Playmaker finds a way. To make it a dangerous situation. See where he goes here. Pass through the slot. Nobody home. Flyer Kungan. Can't get that puck up to Wiegelson. It's a battle of the turnovers here. It's both teams, and you can tell. I mean, looking for more creative looks, just trying anything they can to find that little bit of space. It's Eki now. Six and a half to play. That pass off the mark. One, though, by Potsla. Now for Tamu. Throws one on. Ends up wide. Spotsloff oh. kept it in for the moment. Unfortunate break there. Dominoiti across. Great job by Tamu to take it away. He turns it over for Dominoiti. Now for Habu. Shot scores! Saying it looked like it was deflected, but it's clean in. Dominoiti's second goal tonight. And again, starts off the scoring for Habu. It's one to nothing. Absolutely huge coming out from Havu there. Sort of not what you'd call a dangerous shot location, but it finds its way into the back of the net. I'm curious. It, it, I, I, I thought the same as you did. It hit something, not necessarily deflection, obviously, because it, it's credited to Dominoiti there. Just not a goal that you expect to see being given up from Kape in that situation, but it found the back of the net, and Havu are on top, one nothing. 19th of the season. It's in. We're tied. Out of nowhere, a bouncing puck, unsettled, finds its way into the back of the goal. Sin, as you can tell by the replay skip, it's an own goal. Yeah. But we are tied at one for Lunda on the board, despite not having a registered shot. That was a uh, a puck pickup thing, I believe. It looked like it was it was tried to pass through by Potsloff to Plea Maker. We're going to get a look at it here. They took their time out just to be sure, but yeah. Oh, boy, yeah. That was a several kind of attempts at the puck pickup, it looked like, from the defense of Havu there. And it was just that last one that sort of guided the puck into the net. And obviously, you hate to see that. You hate to be on the ice for something like that. But 
That's a quick response coming out from Frolundoff. Uh, again, a goal that you didn't expect to see uh, go in from there. Probably didn't expect to see that one go in uh, in, in favor of uh, Frolunda. So I guess we're uh, back to square one. Absolute heartbreaker, though, for Havu. I mean, to get that opening goal, we've seen both teams kind of playing with fire. When it comes to turn lovers, what a goal! It's two to one, Havu. Flyer Kungan finds the back of the net after a great give and go below the goal line. Unreal. That's the uh, that's the classic Havu right there. Just a quick cycle below the goal line, as you said, back to uh, Flyer Kungan there on the doorstep on that short side. Puts it home and. That's about three goals in the span of a, a couple minutes game time here between these two teams. So from a defensive struggle to a first period with three goals in it, uh, you never know what you're going to get from these two teams. Yeah, still two minutes to go here as well. Dominoiti in on the attack. Tried to go back to Wiegelson. Didn't even have time to say, yeah, on the first goal, it was off of a turnover. We've seen a lot of defensive zone turnovers. And then you have that bouncing puck own goal. And then, a, again, classic vintage Havu, as you said. So here we go, final 20 seconds. Playmaker trying to gain the zone. He does. Great cool. job by Flyer Kungan to take it away. Five seconds for Havu to work with. Wiegelson unable to hold on to the puck. Two to one will be the scoreline at the end of the first. There will be one more faceoff to kill off that final 1.2 seconds. But Sin, I mean, we always said with this series, expect the unexpected. This first period continues to live up to the hype when we see games between these two teams. It absolutely does. Again, the, the the final score from last game is what the score is at the end of the first in this one here. We're going to get to see that opening goal there uh, from Dominoiti. Again, just kind of a almost looked like a floating wrist or a bit of change up. And I, I still can't see if it hits anyone. I think it just may have beat Kape cleanly right there. But something that will go overlooked in the grand scheme of things was the little bit of L skating that we just saw from Flyer Kungen at the air and at the end there when they were kind of transitioning from defense to offense. He L skated threw about and did like a one of the slow spinoramas that you can do from the L skating ability went through about two or three white jerseys to create the transition breakout those are the little things that these players do we saw Eki doing it a bit earlier when he L skated through and was able to get a backhand shot away but those are just some of the little things that both of these uh, teams have these you know incredible players who can do these things like that that again in the grand scheme of things may get overlooked but those are the little plays that create the transitions that lead to offense and that will lead to those cycle plays to those shots from the point that will lead to goals right here and that's exactly what makes these two teams so so great it's just they're all the little things all the details of their game and the kind of you know the extra effort that comes out from their players to create that sort of uh the sort of chances for either time Second period underway here again, two to one in favor of Havu. You could say Havu though have scored all three goals if you really think about it. Again, for Lunda scoring on an own goal without registering a single shot, and Sin, I think that's an undersold uh, stat from that first period. Not a single shot on target for for Lunda in the opening 20 minutes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, again, Havu kind of starting in the way that they wanted with the majority of the chances, with the majority of the shots. We'll see if Verlinder are able to get back in here and uh, at least register one. That is Potsloff heckling the Havu breakout. Kape does play that one. Don't know if he wanted to. Puck turned over. Dominointi for Nasustelia. Goes down low for Wiegelson. And back to the point. Nasustelia, Wiegelson again. Flyer Kungen down low. Vilikun now. Great fast movement from Havu. This is what they want. Can they find the opening? Dominoiti has his options. Being hounded though, held onto it a little bit too long. Eki in a battle with Wiegelson. Eki goes for the board play. Poked away, Dominoiti's there, bouncing puck. Pleamaker comes up with it. He's in all alone, and it's knocked away. Great job by Vilikun to get back and take away the angle. Pleamaker certainly couldn't cut in front. Made it easy for Hanselinho to hold that short side. Yeah, he was trying to cut in front with some L-skating ability. Huge shot coming out. Another one. And uh, that a power play will be coming up. I mean, geez. The second you think that there's perhaps a bit of a lull, a quick counterattack from Falunda gets a couple shots on net that Ponsolino turns aside. But that will be uh, Nasustelia going to the box in a Falunda power play. In this first power play of the night, the number one power play in the league against the 11th ranked PK for Havu. Huge, huge moment here for Falunda to tie this one up once more. They keep it in the attacking zone. Great hold. Here's Tamu for Playmaker. Knocked away and cleared out by Dominoiti. 
I mean, Sin just leading up to that penalty, though, like you said, a couple of great chances for Forlunda. It just seems to be the, the theme. Slow starters, in a sense. As case in point, they ice it on their power play exactly yes. halfway through it. That's really rough right there. Looked like a bit of miscommunication. The pass was over to Playmaker, but he held up um, at the blue line there just before the pass kind of got off, which led to the icing. That's never something that you want to see on your power play here. And Havu will just take some time, look to dump it. They didn't get the dump off, though. Yeah, Zeki has it. Tried the short side, nearly got Hansel into the bite. Puck is cleared at least back to the neutral zone. Here we go, nearly back to five on five. So Havu will survive this. Because we are about halfway through regulation sin in a wildly unpredictable game. Yeah, <laughs> what a time to bring up the uh, unpredictable point as we uh, saw that one somehow corral back into their zone and a rocket pass. Misses Eki at the point right there. Let's see if uh, Ferlin just want to settle this puck down a bit. Otzloff has it here. Can't find Eki. Now Sestelia in his way. Wiegelson, now Flyer Kungan on the off wing, sends it around, Billy Kuhn. Renasa Steljak, caught on an odd angle as he tried to throw that one on. Eki was able to pick it off, trouble here. Loimu back for Eki. Loimu again, shot hit the post. Heard the ping, very close call there for Forlunda. Of six and a half minutes to go, Temu for Loimu. Forlunda get it going down the other way, only momentarily Habu able to take it away. Trouble here, though, on the pressure from Fleamaker. Gets it down low. Eki shot. Save. Anselina knows those short side shots are coming. Here's Flyer Kungan for Dominoiti. Great job to gain the zone. Flyer Kungan down low for Dominoiti. Knocked away. Dominoiti, Flyer Kungan backhand stopped by Kape. What a stressful situation this has to be for these goaltenders. You just never know how these bounces are going to go. Dominoiti has that one intercepted by Playmaker. They win it right back. Two and a half minutes to go now here in the second. As Sin mentioned, two to one was the scoreline uh, for Forlunda in game number one, an overtime victory. The, uh, two to one lead at the end of the first, and somehow that scoreline is still maintained. As Eki, trouble on the double team. Wiegelson in the corner. Being held up, Dominoiti fighting for it as well. Flyer Kungan banks it off the back of the goal. Billy Coombe for Flyer Kungan, pass across, intercepted, still fought on for by Wiegelson before Loimu sweeps in to take it away. Stretch pass for Playmaker, final five seconds. He'll dump it into the corner. Nasu Stelia, great job. And the play stops. Two to one for Habu, heading into the third period as we'll get another look at one of Hanselino's saves. And this was that, those in tight opportunities kind of after uh, when we thought there was just going to be a, right before that, uh, the penalty kill essentially for them, there's a shot right there and there was another one on the other side of the net that he had to stop. You can see the sh slap shot right there and then that shot as well that he somehow got back for. Two blocker saves. Absolutely massive. And again, there's Havu with, you know, the distinct advantage time on attack wise. They do have the goal advantage as well, face off advantage. But. The registered shots are about the same. So you can see what Javu's mentality is because they're definitely looking for those A-grade chances, which, you know, you know, definitely not a bad idea. And I've really liked their offense's own pressure, and they've sort of shifted to this, like, a five-man overload. When, as we kind of saw in the last uh, last play there, when they got the puck near the uh, the corner boards right there, it was Vili Kuhn actually kind of went down more towards the half wall to help to keep that in, and Nasuselli rotated almost all the way over to where... Billy Coon's uh, point would be and it's just you can really see the kind of the Havu mentality to, to, to keep that puck possession it's just kind of a five man overload happening right there as Flyer Coon tries to sneak that one home very sneaky attempt on the net drive another face off here of course Sin as well face off wise we mentioned how close this battle was you see there six to four In favor of Havu for Lunda will come up with this one though Playmaker can't get a hold of that stretch pass, but he will win it back on the second chance pass just out of the reach of Loimu. Look to reset here for, for Lunda, but you can see all five players, at least momentarily, in the attacking zone for Havu, willing to try to make this as difficult as possible, and they do force another turnover. 
Twigelson, who wins the race, tried to drive the net, taken away again by the defense. Eki has that initial pass broken up, gets the puck back. Again, Falunda will settle it down. Here's Wiegelson. Now over for Flyer Coongan. Billy Coon pinching in. Delayed call. Power play coming up here for Havu. Going to be an interference call. Sin. I didn't see it as it happened, but Loimu taking a seat here for that bump oh, there. Was. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was going to be like a hit from behind as the player turned with the puck and then the hit came out. But yeah, it was... Uh, completely away from the play, which is why both of us missed it. But this is what an opportunity now for Havu to get a power play goal and extend that lead. Off the draw, loose puck. Villacoon can't keep it in. Fleamaker's going to have a chance for this one. Cut back, good hit by Flyer Coongan as Villacoon gets uh, back body dropped like it's wrestling in the 80s. Villacoon again, now Vanessa Stelia back to him. Shot saved by Cape. loose puck still there, nearly swept home again by Villacoon. The puck cleared out. And Cape has been fantastic today, despite the scoreline favoring Havu right now. Nasostelia sweeps back to the forehand. Delays. Pass off the mark. Dominoite able to regain it. Flyer Kungan for Villikun. Ten seconds to go on the man advantage. They got to get a chance here. Dominoite to wrap around. Wiegelson was there. Bumped off the puck. We're back to five on five. Tonsolino plays that one. A little bit of trouble here. Wiegelson. For Dominoite, they're going to be able to get it out of the zone. Flyer Kungan, a little bit of space, knocked loose. Here's Potslop for Playmaker. Good hit by Nasu Stelia. Potslop still fighting. Billy Kuhn. Good job to get that one away from danger. Good movement here for Havu. Here's Wiggleson trying to cut in and a net drive. Snuffed out by the back check of Playmaker, who has it here now. Nearly halfway through this uh, third period here, nearly. Opportunity there that was taken away off the hit on the half wall, and still it's Verlunda fighting for it. Poke, uh, poke check there, sends it right across the slot. Always a nervous moment for a goaltender. Abu can't maintain possession. Here's Pleamaker, and again, an offside call against Verlunda. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of kind of more scrambly uh, pace coming out here in this third period as uh, everyone's trying to, you know, kind of force those servers in a bit of a better way. We will see the timeout now coming for Verlunda. So they want to get those stamina bars uh, re refreshed here. They're not too sure when the next whistle will be. You usually like to see teams uh, taking it around that six minute or so mark, but with it being as close as it is right now at the nine minute mark, you never kind of know when, again, with the pace of this period, who knows when that next whistle will be. And if you're for Lunda, sometimes you prefer to just keep playing, keep skating, because that's what's creating kind of some of these hectic situations where we're seeing defensemen sort of scramble back and forth. We almost saw Wiegelson be able to split the defense. We almost saw Playmaker at the end there you know, almost be able to get around Nasu Stelia on uh, that screen left-hand side of the ice. Eight and a half minutes to play here again. The third period of the regular season matchup between these two. We will not see them play again this season unless we get that postseason matchup as Hanselino with a good save. Playmaker's secondary chance. Really no space to work with. It went off the side of the goal. Billy Coombe for Dominoiti. A little bit of space here for the centerman. Tried to drop down. Tamu was there to take it away. Pressure on Frolunda here. In same situation, the team's ahead of Frolunda. Love them what they're seeing right now. Dominoite, the rebound scores! Sin initially, I was going to say, the rebound out of his reach. Somehow he finds it. Second goal of the game. Havu up by two. I think the reason he found it is because it was a puck pickup by the defense. Yeah, and then he lost it immediately. It just put it on a platter right there for Dominoiti. There's been a couple unfortunate uh, puck pickups for either team now. That one benefiting Havu there as Dominoiti gets in with the puck in, again, a gift wrap situation one on one with Kape, and he does not make a mistake from there. Havu up three to one. Up to 20 goals on the season now is Dominoiti. Under five to go. Here's Flyer Kungan around for Wiegelson. Gets it back. Wrap around. Stopped by Cape. May have hit the side of the goal. Still a fight for it. Flyer Kungan's going to win it. Pass in front. Scores! Vili Kuhn makes it 4-1. to one. And Havu are going to get it done. Sin Vili Kuhn entered play today. Tied for first and goals amongst defenders. That's his 10th of the season. And maybe no bigger goal for him this year. 
I mean, you can see why. He He's not afraid to jump in the plays, and he's got that howitzer of a one-timer when he creeps in to that high slot on some of their zone cycles, and kind of felt like the team wanted it for him right there. They said, go up on the rush, and he remained, he's remained down low on that pressure, and then they fed him the puck in front of the net, and unless Fralunda can pull off a miracle here, I think this one's going to Habu. A huge, huge result as unfortunately for Fralunda, we know that they weren't overly happy with their play heading into the action tonight. They do get the result in game one. But go figure, Havu will earn the split again. This is going to be a great result for the likes of Sawo. A better result as well for Hreds at the top of the standings as we hit one minute to play here in this third period. And then, of course, expect these two teams to still play hard. Goal differential, as always, could be a factor mm -hmm. in the standings. You never know when that extra goal could end up being the difference maker again. We have seen teams miss out on the playoffs on goal differential in the past. It's a big hit there in the neutral zone. Loimo able to hold it, though. Here's Eki. They got a man without a stick in the attacking zone. It's Potsloff. Tamu's shot poked away. Potsloff still oh, can't still pick it up. It. And finally able to regain the stick. With 25 to go, Wiggleson's going to nearly win that race. That chop was enough to disrupt. Potsla for Recky. Somehow gets to the traffic. Now Cecilia there. Second chance. A trip is drawn in a late power play for Fralunda. Be intrigued to see if Cape joins in on the fun here just to try and get a goal back. I don't know if it's worth risking the goal against, but... Yeah. Might not Captain quite... Flyer Kunga to the box. Yeah, it might not quite be worth it in this situation, but yeah, they are going to go hard for a goal right here. As you said, that goal differential, oh, so important. Off the draw. Puck up for grabs. Now Sustelia sends it around. That will pretty much do it as the puck dumped out. A huge result for Havu. 4-1 the final score. El Clasico delivers once more as these two teams split the result, but in. It is Havu walking away with mm -hmm. the lion's share of the points. Three to yep. two over Forlunda. Again, very big. It gets them a bit closer to Forlunda here. After, after that first one went to overtime, we mentioned that, you know, Havu would only be able to tie them. They're going to be, I believe, one point um, behind them here in this situation, if I'm uh, not mistaken. So, again, it's absolutely huge. The, the matchup, as you said, did not disappoint. And I, I got to say, very, very, very impressed by Havu. We've seen them, you know... Against that Sawo team, I would say, as we saw, they were the better team in that one. They still lost both games. They only got the single point out of it. But, you know, you kind of figured that they deserved a bit of a better fate. And in this one, for the majority of this matchup, you could argue that they were the better team. And they really kind of capitalized on their chances in that one as they failed to do in the first game. So it's good to see them sort of sticking to their game plan, not afraid to adjust when things aren't going their way. And in that one, getting rewarded with the extra goals and the victory in regulation. And you get one more look at that phenomenal goal from Flyer Kungen. Just a job well done to say the absolute least. Great, great work. And again, a huge result. As you get a look there, too, at the numbers. Since just five registered shots for Fralunda. And keep in mind, that goal was an own goal as well. So. Yeah. That's that. That's tough. That's tough, and uh, you know I can imagine perhaps the the level of frustration that that might be there right now, and you know for this team. Like I said, Eki displayed that frustration on Twitter with how things were going for them recently, and it makes you wonder how they're feeling now. You know, I don't want to call it doubt, but certainly just any kind of frustration and not feeling like things are you know running to the best of their ability. That you're not playing at your top level that you can. Yeah. Heading into the playoffs, that's that's a tough spot to be in. It really is, and it's it's almost kind of a feeling of their their destiny isn't quite in their own hands when they're not playing to the best of their abilities. It feels like a lot more is being left up to up to chance at times, and that you kind of have to you know adjust to just throwing pucks on the net. And while you're in control of a game, and while you're looking for those deflection type chances, that can be absolutely massive. And it's just yeah, for for Linda right now. They find themselves in a position they really we really haven't seen them in a while. That's eight losses on the season. They're 18, 5, and 3, I believe. And that's just simply not, not a record that we're used to seeing uh by the name of Ferlinda here. So yeah, they're definitely got some things to figure out as they head into the playoffs. Obviously, still in a good position. They're still where you know in the playoffs in a decent seating, but 
you can just tell, you know, how how good a team is by the standards that they hold themselves to. And obviously for Linda holding themselves to the utmost. And, you know, they got some things to figure out. They're going to work, work, you know, work to get better, you know, not only, you know, at NHL 22, but within, you know, their their game plan here in the ECL elite. And I'm excited to see what sort of adjustments they do make heading into the playoffs. I think it's fair to say for just the second time in our coverage here with the ECL Elite Division, we will not see for Linda as the number one seed. We'll see uh, how that might affect them heading into the playoffs. But again, that is not it for our action here tonight. While Habu and Forlunda are done after a brief intermission, we'll be back again in another crucial matchup for so many reasons. It is number seven, Granite Gaming, taking on 14th, HV71. Those two games coming up in just a matter of minutes, so stick with us here. While we prep for that, we'll be back after this intermission to set the stage for those games. Again, uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> 